the teammates outside Fenway Park in Gate B as we get ready inside Fenway Park for Game 3 of the series between the Rays and the Red Sox. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo along with Steve Lyons. Welcome to Red Sox Baseball. Well, last night, the Red Sox needed a spark, and they got one from their center fielder, Mookie Betts. You know, it seems like every day he steps onto the field, he provides a spark for this ball club. And what a great kid he is. I mean, he's a great character guy. He's a tremendous athlete. He's willing to learn, and he's shown that by learning different positions. He's already shown great instincts in the outfield. And look at the history that he provided in last night's game for this ball club. He just keeps getting better and better. Those numbers are starting to climb, too. He's right around 240, and you know he's going to be way higher than that when it's all said and done. Last night, the two home runs for him make it three and four on the season for Mookie Betts, all part of the Red Sox 2-0 victory in last night's game. Betts back in the lineup again tonight and in center field. The Red Sox trying to take it tonight from Tampa Bay. It'll be two out of three if they're able to win it and the end of this homestand for the Red Sox. On the hill tonight for the Red Sox is Justin Masterson. Masterson's ERA coming in is 4.71, but the record is 2-0. and His sixth start of the year is coming up soon from Fenway Park. We're back with more right after this. Toyota's website for deals by a Toyota.com. Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Your local Subaru dealers. And by Southwest Airlines. Book your low fare now at Southwest.com. Welcome back to Fenway Park. A beautiful night for baseball. Game three of the series between the Rays and the Red Sox. Welcome back inside the broadcast booth, everybody. I'm Don Orsillo. Well, sometimes when somebody goes down with an injury, it opens up the door for somebody else. And that's exactly what's taking place here for the Red Sox. The injury to Hanley Ramirez, not on the DL, still on the active roster, but unable to play. That means somebody else is going to get a shot. And with more to tell us who that somebody else is, Gary Streisky. Yeah, well, back when he was playing with the St. Louis Cardinals, he was an everyday player, even an all-star just a handful of seasons ago. Yes, I'm talking about Alan Craig. He knows full well, so do the other players on this Red Sox roster. They know they can't replace Hanley Ramirez, but Alan Craig hoping to do his best to at least supplement, especially now that he's going to be hopefully what he sees as an everyday player. It's definitely not an easy role, but, um, you know, there's a point where you just got to, you got to find a way to do it and be successful and you know I think that starts with just having a good attitude and, and I feel like I've done that you know and uh, you know I've been working hard and and uh, you know things are getting better so I feel like I'm you know putting the battle on the ball and having good at bats and uh, you know that's all I could do. Yeah, Don, this is just the second time this season, still early, that he's been able to start back-to-back -back games and hoping to continue that trend while Hanley Ramirez makes his way back to the team. All right, Gary, thanks very much. Well, the Red Sox and the Rays are coming your way next from Fenway Park.
Blue skies above, the lights are on as the Red Sox and the Tampa Bay Rays get ready for the finale of this series. The weather conditions are brought to you by Benjamin Moore. 71 beautiful degrees here at Fenway, breeze out to center at 11 miles per hour, and the forecast partly cloudy for the remainder of the night as the fans settle in here for the finale of this series. The Red Sox with a win last night. Uh, they blanked this race team, shutting them out two to nothing. And as a result, the Red Sox now a game under 500. They are four games back at the New York Yankees. Tampa Bay starting the night a game over 500 and three games back of the Yankees. And of course, the next opponent for John Farrell's Red Sox will be the Toronto Blue Jays beginning on Friday night. Red Sox take the field tonight from Fenway. As they do, let's check out the Tampa Bay Rays starting lineup. Brought to you by New England Chevy dealers as leading it off the center fielder Kevin Kiermeyer with Logan Forsythe at second base. James Loney at first base. Evan Longoria got his 1,000th hit here last night. Plays at third base. David DeJesus, the DH, with Joey Butler in left field as Drupal Cabrera. It is Brandon Geyer in right and Rene Rivera doing the catching and batting ninth. Tonight's Red Sox starting pitchers presented by your local New England Audi dealers. Justin Masterson on the mound for his sixth start of the year. Perfect 2 0 record. The ERA is up over four at 4.71. He's logged 28 and two thirds innings, had 22 strikeouts along the way, and opponent sitting at 245 against Masterson. A no decision last time out, but pitched well against the Yankees. Six innings, giving up only two runs. And here's the Red Sox defense brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Same as last night. Sandoval, Bogarts, Pedroia, and Napoli around the infield. In the outfield, Alan Craig getting his opportunity out there in left field. Mookie Betts in center and Holt in right. And Blake Swihart behind the plate catching Justin Masterson, who has benefited from a lot of runs, I'll tell you what. Red Sox score him 6.2 runs average. That's how you can keep that 2-0 record. All right, the umpires tonight, Mark Carlson with the plate, Mike DeMiro at first base. It is Trip Gibson at second, and the crew chief, Brian Gorman. Now Masterson on the hill as the Red Sox get ready to wrap up this series, and boy, they got great pitching from Rick Porcello last night, exactly what they needed. That's two very good outings in a row now for Porcello. His last two starts is right. I mean, he's, he's been dealing, and I think that he has used all his pitches effectively. I think he was really tinkering around with throwing the four seam fastball kind of got away from throwing the sinker as much as he had in the past. But now he's added everything in there and I think he's got a really good feel for what's going on with his pitches. Now he uses them all very nicely and last night look at those numbers just excellent. Now here we go for game three and Kevin Kiermeyer about to lead it off here for the Rays, the speedy center fielder. Rays are headed home for a lengthy homestand after the ball game tonight. First pitch of the ball game is going to miss outside, and we're underway. Kiermaier checks in, hitting at 275. Two homers and seven runs batted in. I like this kid. Good looking young player. Drafted in the 31st round. It wasn't like, you know, anyone was there just begging to take him. How do you get noticed being drafted uh, that deep? I mean, into the rounds. You think about it, you know, first round draft choice is going to get a bunch of chances, whether it be even with this organization or another couple organizations. Yeah. 31st round pick's a little different. Yeah, you better get off to a great start in your career or they send you home quickly. And that's what he did. I think he proved very early on in his career that he was an excellent defensive outfielder. And they were saying that even when he was in low A ball that he might be the best outfielder in their organization. We saw him make a, a great catch up against the triangle wall out there against the bullpen last night off a blast off of Ortiz's bat. Fouls it back 88 miles an hour right now from Masterson. That's where his fastball has been registering and that has been up for discussion really from spring training on the velocity or lack thereof for Masterson sometimes early in these outings as well. They off pitch. That one is foul back. We're talking about that catch robbing David Ortiz what he thought was going to be a home run. A little bit more to the right and that's in the bullpen but instead Kiermaier making the grab. David could do is smile. 
There is ball four and a good bat for Kiermeyer works the walk on eight pitches. As a pitcher, you know, if you're going to throw that many pitches, the end result has to be an out somehow. Ends up walking the leadoff hitter to start the night. And here is Logan Forsyth. Third and average among American League second baseman. 303 with two homers and 11 runs batted in. While the Rays as a team really have not gotten hot at the plate, he has been pretty consistent all year. Take strike one. Bumped him up in the order now to number two. Last seven games, toting a 393 average with five multi hit games in those last seven games. Quickly down 0 and 2. As a hitter, you know you're really feeling good when you can leave the ballpark. Every night for a week knowing that you got two hits did something to contribute to whatever the team did. Wraps it foul we'll do it again 0 and 2. It's played all 28 games so far for Tampa Bay. As James Loney is going to get a new friend over there as Loney hands off a baseball to a youngster. Happy little guy right there. Runner goes. The pitch is a ball. The throw is going to be. Oh, did he come off? Came yeah. off. Initially was safe, but Kiermeyer could not keep the foot on the bag. Goes by it. Slow to get up. And keeping the tag on him was Pedroia for the out. Now that's what you have to do these days. Keep that tag right on, guys, because they'll come off the base. He, he was so fast he couldn't stop. <laughs> that's easy for, for PD. He just says, all right. You imagine all your momentum still going into the outfield. There's no way you can turn around and get back to the base. That takes care of Kiermaier oh. and now hit with the pitches. Forsyth. Fastball up and in. The fifth batter that Masterson has hit this year. It's a walk and a hit batter. Fortunately, they're able to throw out Kiermaier at second base. Now James Loney. Take a look at the delivery from Masterson. He's so tall and lanky and he long arms the ball. You see how long it comes across. He doesn't like you know, there's no bend in his elbow almost. And I think that's one of the reasons why he struggles a little bit with command. The mechanics of having to try to do that every time consistently is tough. Could be two. Pedroia to second for one on to first. It is two. Masterson gets a lot of ground ball outs. Just got two there. Red Sox coming up.
tonight's Red Sox starting lineup is brought to you by your Eastern Hyundai dealers. As Mookie Betts leads it off in center field. Two home runs last night. Both runs for the Red Sox in last night's game. Pedroia at second base. David Ortiz, the DH, with Napoli at first. Sandoval at third base. Alan Craig back in left. Brock Holt in right. Sandoval Bogarts with shortstop bat safe. And Blake Swihart does the catching tonight. Mookie Betts ready to lead it off here in the bottom of the first inning. In there for strike one. Tonight's Rays starting pitcher is presented by New England Nissan dealers. Alex Colome, his major league career, only nine games old. Seven starts, four and one in his career. Only one start so far this year. And as he pours in another strike at 94 miles an hour. And it was a good one against the Orioles. A win. Five shutout innings. Did not walk anybody. And struck out six along the way. Up and away here to Mookie Betts, and it's one and two. They're going to keep their eye on Colum A. This is a guy who hasn't really gotten enough time in. He's spent a lot of time on the DL. He got to spring training late because of visa problems. Promptly got very sick. Sick. Ended up in the hospital for six days with pneumonia. So he's really been behind. That's why he's only made three starts. 26-year-old rookie. He was matched up against Chris Tillman in that last outing that he had. Able to shut down that uh, powerful Orioles lineup. Shutting him down in five innings and grabbing the win. Was ahead 0-2, but now a full count. Well, he's a power guy. Good fastball. Hard slider. He doesn't really buy into the team philosophy of trying to run the pitches up in the strike zone to get strikeouts. He would prefer to stay down. And he doesn't have a change up really to go along with making that high fastball effective. Line to left Butler coming in and the left fielder is in perfect position to make that catch for the first out. And tonight's Rays defense brought to you by DraftKings. Longoria, Cabrera, Forsyth at second base, and James Loney over at first. And in the outfield, Butler continuing to see action out there. Kiermaier in center field, and Geyer making the start tonight in right. And Rivera behind the plate with Colome pitching. Now one down here in the first inning brings up Dustin Pedroia. Taking strike one that time at the top of the zone. Colome has been operating so far at 94 miles an hour. Did he go? No, says Mike DeMiro, first base umpire. And the pitch arsenal for Alex Colome, 73% of the time, fastballs, 12% breaking balls, and 15% changeups. Again, they'll check, and again, Pedroia did not offer. Dustin, one for six in the series so far. Saw PD earlier today. I said, Congratulations on the 1,400 hits. You're almost halfway to where you want to be. <laughs> <laughs> Little dribbler back towards the mound. Colome quickly there to grab it. And makes the good, hard, accurate throw to get Pedroia. So two down, and it takes us to David Ortiz. 250 with four homers and 12 runs batted in. Well, David in the midst of an eight game hitting streak coming into tonight's game and hitting at 367 during that hitting streak. Had a hit here last night, double as part of a one for four night. It's his longest hitting streak in almost a year. Yeah, May 6th through the 17th last year had a 10 gamer. Thirteenth consecutive season in a Red Sox uniform for David Ortiz. 
Tied with Philadelphia's Chase Utley for the longest continuous tenure in a current major league roster. How about the numbers he throws up against this Rays organization? 107 extra base hits, 153 RBIs just against the Rays. That's the most in both categories of any opposing player against that organization. The end of the shift, it's Forsyth in short right field. His throw Whoa. is off the mark, and look out. All the way back towards the catcher. Ortiz stops at first base, reaching there, and sometimes you put people in different positions, and as part of this shift, you got the second baseman, Forsyth, well into right field, having to make that throw, and he misses the mark. You know, that's a bad play right there, but I think you got to blame James Loney a little bit, too. I think that he stretched too early and then made the throw look worse. Look, he's a little lazy there. See him? He, he doesn't really stretch to where the ball is. He kind of stretched right towards Forsyth, but that's not where the ball's going. That's how you can make a guy look really bad when the throw really wasn't that bad. It is an E4 charge to Forsyth as Ortiz aboard here with two down in the inning, giving... Mike Napoli a chance. So Colby thought he was out of the inning. They had it defensively aligned perfectly. Now Napoli, a ground one softly left side. Longoria charges in and throws out. Mike Napoli to end the inning. Red Sox are retired. We're through one without a score from Fenway. the new Scion TC poll asks this simple question the Red Sox putting a bow on this series and then they're heading out to the west side but first they're going to Toronto so what series are you most looking forward to Sox 1 for Toronto Sox 2 Oakland or Sox 3 Seattle text your answer to 536-536 message and data rates those may apply text help if you need it visit nesson.com slash terms for all that fun legal stuff guys all right thanks very much Gary Always good to go to Toronto. Of course, uh, the first of three visits for the Red Sox to Toronto. Don't always have the opportunity to get to the West Coast uh, as much. Just one trip to Oakland, one to Seattle. I would say Seattle's one of my favorite ballparks in the big league, so I was looking forward to that. Great city, too. Yep. If it's not raining, which it usually is. But you got the roof, so you don't have to worry about any delays or anything. Yeah. At the ballpark. Right. It's a fun city to explore unless you're just soaking wet the whole time. Well, Longoria grounded out to third base to begin the inning. David DeJesus DHing in tonight's game and hitting a 274 coming in. I think you got to throw the fish. 
Pike Street Market. I'm pretty sure yeah. you got to do that. Well, you got to go at least and watch other people throw the fish. <laughs> well, I don't know you're if you throwing necessarily it. if you have to handle them yourself. I'm but. going down there with you, and you're throwing a fish. <laughs> I've watched it many times. Big old I've coho been. salmon or something like that, just <laughs> firing it across the room. <laughs> Jesus grounding it foul. And if you want, you can wear that yellow shirt. <laughs> uh, I got to read a promo. Red Sox suites and premium packages provide a VIP experience for you and your guests. Call 877-RED-SOX-9 or email premium sales at redsox.com for more information. One out in the inning, the 2-2. Line in the left center field, a hit that gets down. Over his bets to the backhand and a wide turn at first for DeJesus, but nice job by Mookie Betts to get it back in quickly. Every day Mookie Betts gets better and better with his instincts in the outfield. I would like to have seen this ball not cut off because it was a perfect throw into second base. They cut it because DeJesus decided not to run, but you know, he's getting to be a little bit like Pedroia. Does everything technically sound every time? That ball is going to one hop into second base, and De Jesus would have been dead if he tried. Joey Butler, a 222 hitter so far, two for nine in his first major league home run in game one of the series. That takes a breaking ball, grounds it back to Masters, and he's thinking two. The second for one, on to first. They turn it. Nicely done and initiated by Justin Masterson. Two double plays and two innings for the Red Sox D. How about the defense so far in the early going? Easy double play there. And then Masterson starting a double play. Quick off the mound, good turn. That sets everything up perfectly. Easy turn for Petey at second. Didn't have to worry about a bad throw. Just go ahead. Perfectly done. On to the bottom of the second inning. And Pablo Sandoval swing to the first pitch. Look out. And he rips it foul. Fortunately, off the fencing down the left field line. Pablo hitting just under 300 at 299. Two homers and 12 runs batted in. He is absolutely lunching up on right handed pitching. 386 so far on the season against righties. Lefties have been a different story for him, though. Little trouble. Really struggling from the right side. You've seen more of him than we have over the years, having worked in the National League for a long time. I mean, 
Has he always had trouble from the right side or is this just a recent thing? Just the last couple seasons where he started struggling from when he's in the right-handed batter's box against lefties and nobody can really explain it. He doesn't really know why either. It appears to be a much different swing from the right side than the left side. You know, it's funny. A lot of switch hitters do. You know, remember uh, Berkman used to say, left-handed, I have a nice swing. Right-handed, I look like I'm chopping wood. You know, just, you know, coming over the top. Because I think a lot of guys, a lot of right-handed hitters dominate their swing with their right hand. They're throwing their right hand over the top a lot. And when you're a, when you're a right-handed player hitting left-handed, that's why left-handed hitters generally are low ball hitters because your your right hand is pulling the bat down through the zone instead of throwing it over the top. That's a piece of this and fouls it off to catcher Rivera. Let's see if Colome kind of goes to what has been his best pitch certainly in his last start which is a slider see if he tries to go back leg down and in to Sandoval with that pitch right here wants him to bounce a curveball now oh, slider his curveball is one of his worst pitches to throw he, Generally, we'll just throw that up there as a get me over pitch on a first pitch if a guy's looking for a fastball. We won't throw it in a crucial situation. Something going back to the gas here on a 2 2 pitch. Sandoval reaches out, protects the plate, and fouls it off to the left out of play. Gulf Electricity, they're powering Fenway Park, the home of the Red Sox, and they can power your home for less. Visit GolfElectricity.com today. Two two pitch coming. And Sandoval grounds it to Isdrubal Cabrera for the first out here of the second inning. Tomorrow morning on Ness and catch the quarterfinals of ACC softball's tournament. The Boston College Lady Eagles begin the day playing Florida State at 11 a.m. Don't miss it tomorrow on Nesson. One out in the second inning for Alan Craig. 163 with a home run, two runs batted in. I'm thinking back even to last year, this is really the first time Alan Craig has had. Uh, Chance to play back to back to back situations here and having a chance to get back to being an everyday player, which he was with the Cardinals. In fairness to him, I mean, a long time in between bats, especially the first couple of weeks of the year. Yeah. And that's not easy. You know, people will talk about the most difficult job on the field. Some will say, oh, it's catcher or shortstop. The most difficult job is being a utility guy. The guy who doesn't get to play that often and then is expected to play well when he does. It's an art. Some guys can really handle that well. Some guys can't and it would be hard to expect him to be really good at it because he's never had to do it kind of comes to the ballpark expecting his name to be in the lineup and of course Hanley Ramirez there sitting there waiting to get ready to play again and Alan Craig is getting his chance how do you keep your timing that'd be the one question I would have as a, a hitter in that regard it's the hardest thing in the world because you're you'll probably come out for early batting practice and you certainly show up for regular batting practice but they're throwing it 80 miles an hour yeah. right on a tee so you're never seeing live pitching Swings and misses gets away from Rivera briefly and throws out Craig. That's the first strikeout for Colome. Two down. Ace ticket, the official Red Sox ticket partner, has the best seats at the lowest prices to all the games at Fenway, all with a 200% guarantee. Right now, Ace Ticket has special savings on all Red Sox games, including the Yankees. Visit Ace Ticket or call 1 800 My Seats. Two down here in the second inning, and it brings up Brock Holt. 339 with a home run. Eight runs batted in for Holt. Quiet lately on the homestand now. Brock, three for 21. A couple of nights ago, he hit some bullets all over the yard, especially in the left field that got caught, but just hitting it right on the nose.
Soft grounder back towards the mound. Colome has been busy. Throws a seed to first base from not all that far away. A one, two, three second for Colome. No score through two. Third inning back at Fenway Park without a score through the first two and the bottom third of the Tampa Bay order schedule as Drupal Cabrera, Brandon Geyer, and Rene Rivera. As Drupal Cabrera hitting under 200 coming into tonight's game. 198, no homers, eight runs batted in. There's two hits in his last 22 at bats. And those two hits coming in game one of the series here at Fenway. Two singles on Monday night. As Jubal Cabrera and Justin Masterson, former teammates at the Cleveland Indians. Jammed and lines one out to center field. Betts is there for the first out of the third inning. Let's check in with Garen Austin. Garen. It was a very fun day here at Fenway Park for the first ever Girls of Summer event hosted by the Red Sox. Women had the chance to run, hit, pitch, and field balls off the Green Monster. The participants that we talked to said so they have a new appreciation for how hard the players work. And their favorite part of the day, meeting Brock Colt and Mike Napoli. Don, Steve, they had us working pretty hard today. I'm going to be really sore tomorrow. <laughs> I guess so. Wow. <laughs> This is a ground ball sharply hit by Sandoval at third base. He was in on the grass, and Geyer gets it right by him quickly. And quickly it's down to the corner, and Geyer's get good speed easily into second base with a one out double. Well, there's a pitch right there. It kind of stays out over the middle of the play. You're looking for some action to one side or the other, and Geyer's going to hit a pitch like that all day long. So in scoring position with one out. What did Garen call the event? The women of summer? Yes, I believe so. It's great to have them come out. Anybody wants to come out, kind of run around the field, see what it's like. Looks like they were able to do a lot here at Fenway today. Yeah, Karen said that she was swinging the bat, throwing the ball, and now everything hurts. <laughs> Rene Rivera hitting at 128 out of the number nine spot. And that pitch running into him. Ball on a strike. Seems like all of Masterson's pitches run, and that makes him effective at times, too. 
Yeah, and that's kind of what I was talking about. That pitch to Geyer didn't move at all and just stayed out over the middle of the plate. Usually when you're a guy like Masterson, you can throw the ball down the middle because it will move. Good sweeping slider there. Watch this start on one side of the plate, end up off the plate over there. Comes in on him and strikes him out. That's the first K of the night for Masterson. Two down. Bottom falls out of this one. Kind of the same thing. He's just pretty much aiming just middle in and let the action take it way in. How much fun would that be to be a pitcher with that kind of movement on your on your stuff where you just say, I'm going to throw it right down the middle and I'll let the ball go where it wants to go. And he's doing it at 87, 88 miles an hour. He'd like a little more velocity, but if you can pinpoint your control, you don't need any more. That is 88 and missing. He walked Kevin Kiermeyer. First time he faced him in the first inning. So second time through here for Tampa Bay against Masterson. Now Masterson falling behind 2 and 0. Oh. Beautiful night tonight to be at the ballpark. Really, this homestand, the Red Sox have been pretty fortunate weather-wise, especially the tail end of this homestand. That's a breaking ball that drops in there for a strike. Two and one. Had a nice conversation with Kiermaier earlier today, the Fort Wayne, Indiana native. He said he doesn't really see himself as a leadoff guy. That's where he would like to hit if he had his choice and he said second or seventh I didn't really understand the seventh but if you're a number two hitter in a decent lineup you're going to see a lot of fastballs and he, he kind of liked that idea he said he just thinks he's a little too aggressive to be a leadoff guy breaking ball this time misses a little bit low he's so aggressive he walked twice so far today <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Well, tonight's suits are designed by Joseph Abood, custom made in the USA from fine Italian fabrics available at Men's Warehouse. Two down, two on, and Logan Forsyth coming up. Forsyth hit by Justin Masterson in the first inning. Fifth batter that Masterson has hit this season. And starts him off with a breaking ball for a high strike. Masterson second in the majors in hit batters now behind Mike Pelfrey of the Minnesota Twins. He has hit Always six hits batters. Guys. No one two. His history has been drilling guys and not on purpose. Hey I don't mind. I'm one of those guys that says if you're going to try to pitch inside, if you happen to miss, you better miss in. And that might hit a guy every once in a while because if you're trying to go inside and you miss out over the plate, those balls usually end up in the street. Masterson hit 15 last year. Now, as a hitter, I mean, do you look at that stat for the game? Do you say, wow, this guy hits a lot of guys? I mean, is that in the back of your head? I mean, that can't be a comfortable feeling. I try not to look at those numbers. Okay. <laughs> you you don't don't know. Okay, this guy hit 15 guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's usually the guy who isn't playing that day, walks by yeah. and tells you that, man, this dude hits a lot of guys, man. He, he could hit you. Yeah. This is probably foul. will hit you. <laughs> Odds are you're going to get hit tonight. Yeah, I, and I think I'm, I'm banking on it being you. <laughs> <laughs> two down, two on here. Rays threatening in the third as Logan Forsyth down on the count one and two. On the ground and by the dive of Sandoval at third base. Geyer being waved around. Craig will throw. It is going to be late and the Rays jump on top one to nothing. So a two out RBI for Logan Forsyth and Tampa Bay leads it one nothing. A lot of people say, well, geez, nobody scores on a base hit to left field in Fenway Park, do they? 
Well, when you have the speed of Geyer and when there's two outs, he doesn't have to wait to see if the ball's getting through. So he's jumping quick. The ball took a little while to get to Alan Craig out there and left. So it was a fairly easy scoring play. Two on, two down. James Loney and the misfortune of grounding into a 4-6-3 double play in the first. Now a grounder diving is Pedroia. Back up and he throws out Loney. Dustin Pedroia with another spectacular play at second base. Pedroia literally has to dive up in the air to catch this. Watch the full extension up into the air to make that diving catch and then get up quickly to make the out. Tremendous D. 1-0 Tampa Bay as we move along to the bottom of the third inning. And Xander Bogarts, Blake Swihart, and Mookie Betts scheduled bat here in the third inning. Xander at 2.58 with a home run, 11 runs batted in. One for five so far in the series. And a liner towards left center field. That's going to get down. A gapper to the track of the wall. Bogart's headed for second base with a play in front of him. He'll pull it up there. A ringing double out to left center field for Xander Bogart's and the first hit of the night for Boston. Just about to say you're about, I think when May rolls around, you'll start seeing some more power out of Xander, more doubles, more home runs. And that ball's. Whacked right there into the gap. Blake Swihart, one for ten so far in the big leagues. Now bouncing in. Nice play by Rivera to play that on the backhand. <laughs> Look what I found. How about the throwback? Blake Swihart. No batting gloves. Just comes up hacking. And his major league debut on Saturday against New York called up from the Paw Sox prior to that game. His first major league hit in the fifth inning, a two out infield single. 
Now a liner towards left center field. That'll be a gapper. Bogarts coming around from second base. Swihart to second. He'll get there standing. It's an RBI double. His first RBI in the majors ties this game one to one. Just excellent concentration going with that pitch. That's such a pretty piece of hitting right there. Driving the ball to the opposite field. He didn't just serve it over there. He waited like he was looking for a ball away and then just hammered it. So Swihart at second base. Not only his first RBI of his major league career, first double of his major league career. So a quick answer by the Red Sox here in the bottom of the third inning. You're going to get a chance to say a lot of that. First this, first that. He's going to be a very good player, and we saw a lot of him during spring training. No question about his offensive ability, still working on the defense side of things. I like what John Farrell said about him today that. You know the game isn't speeding up on him and that's what you worry about with a young kid coming to the big leagues his eyes are wide open and he's nervous but he's been able to slow the game down keep it at a good pace for him he's not overmatched we're talking to Mike Socia about this and it seems that not only because he was a catcher but it does seem like it takes longer for catchers to develop because they have too many other responsibilities especially hitting wise now he's known as an offensive catcher most catchers come to the big leagues because they can catch but now they got to worry about all the pitchers. Their job is to pay attention to what's going on in the mound. Up the middle uh, as Cabrera comes in and fires sidearm and in time to be able to get bets. But Sly Hart takes third base with now one out. It's a good read by Sly Hart knowing that that ball wasn't hit that sharply. If you're a runner on second base. You generally know you can move to third if the ball is hit to your left as you're standing out there. Here is Dustin Pedroia grounded back to the mound in the first inning. Drives this deep and far to center field. Back goes Kiermeyer. He'll have plenty of room. He makes the catch, but it's plenty deep enough for Swihart to tag and score and give the Red Sox a 2 1 lead. Dustin Pedroia picks up his 12th RBI of the year on a sack fly to center. Good job by Dustin to elevate that ball into the air. But once again, give Swihart credit for moving up on the Betts ball. If he doesn't, no way he scores because that's not going to be a sacrifice fly if you're still standing on second base. And the two down here in the third, and David Ortiz reached on an error by the second baseman, Logan Forsythe. Time now for Lowe's never stop improving. David Ortiz, 17 games at 194. For the double at 17 strikeouts compared to the last eight games at 367, four doubles, and on base percentage of 412. And will bounce in for ball two. When this season started, I, and I don't like—I don't want to speak for David, but I really don't think he was ready to go. He missed about 10 days down in spring training. He didn't really have a great spring, and that's happened to him in the past. But I think this was one of the few times where he really wasn't ready when the bell rang this season. Boston-based Daily Fantasy Company, DraftKings.com, the official daily fantasy partner of your Boston Red Sox, giving out $300 million in cash prizes. Enter promo code Nesson to play for free. Three and one now to David. Well, we have seen other spring trainings where he has not played a lot in spring training and been good to go right out of the gate. But I would imagine from a timing standpoint, spring training important not only for the pitchers but for the hitters as well. Yeah, and you know the hitters generally tell you they can get 35 to 40 at bats. They're ready to go. Pitchers take way longer to build arm strength, and really that's why it's so long. But you know he missed time because he wasn't feeling well. He had the dehydration, some other physical problems. Now 
Like Napoli waiting on deck with two outs here in the third inning. On the ground, shift is on, and the left side of the infield is manned by Cabrera. It throws out Ortiz and ends the inning. The two runs for the Red Sox, Boston with a 2 1 advantage. Business tips, stories of inspiration, and other ways to make every day a big day for your small business. Celebrate with us at easternbank.com slash small biz. So the fourth we go with the Red Sox now on top two to one. Evan Longoria, David DeJesus, and Joey Butler. Look out. Ooh. Almost another hit batter. Brian did a good job of spinning out of the way of that. Longoria grounded out to his counterpart at third base, Pablo Sandoval, in the second inning. Is he sitting right on a thousand hits right now? He is. Able to get his 1,000th here last night. Followed the Red Sox all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews, radio broadcasts, stat cast, and more. This is driven to deep left field, and that ball is gone. Into the monster seats. Evan Longoria with his second home run of the year ties the game two to two, and the Red Sox lead is short lived. Well done right there. That's where the lack of velocity can hurt Masterson because this is a pitch where Longoria is kind of reaching out for it. So he's just kind of leaning out over the plate. Doesn't have his great power stroke right there. But because there's no velo on that pitch, he just kind of gets out in front of it and hooks it up into the monster seats for a home run. You we were talking about it last night. Where has the power gone for Evan Longoria? Found it on that one. Just his second home run of the year. And it ties this game two aside. Looking at the Rays lineup, you're not going to let him beat you. And he's not seen a lot of good pitchers to hit this year. Does not have the kind of support around him that he has generally had in the past. Now there's a liner out towards left center. Off the bat of David DeJesus. He is headed for second base. Mookie Betts will get it back in. But a home run and now a double have started this top of the fourth inning for the Rays. David DeJesus is one of the happiest guys you'll ever see when you go talk to him before a ball game. And he came into this series hitting 0 for his last 17. 
just couldn't be happier. He said, ah, you know, that's the way this game goes. Sometimes you go good. And he's done nothing but crush the ball since he's been here for the last three days. Six for ten in yeah. the series. 600 will do. Yeah. That's why he's still happy. Now in scoring position now. Nobody out. And Joey Butler, the batter. Butler grounding into a 1-6-3 double play in the second inning. The Sox defensively have turned two. The home run allowed by Masterson, only the second home run is given up this year. Picks up the bottom of the zone as Butler asking the home plate umpire Mark Carlson where that was. And Longoria has tied the game with his home run, and now the Rays looking for more. There's a grounder up the middle, ranging to his left is Bogarts. For the first out of the inning, but De Jesus takes third base. Already one month down of the baseball season. Have you downloaded the Red Sox schedule into your web, desktop, or mobile calendar program yet? If not, visit Nesson.com slash schedule today. One out to Jesus at third base. Butler getting the job done, moving that runner along to third with less than two outs now. And here is as Drupal Cabrera lined out sharply to Mookie Betts in center field back in the third inning. Foul tip that time. This is where Masterson will lean a little more heavily on trying to get a strikeout in this situation. He can't really. Have Cabrera put the ball in play and not score a run. Strike out, get the next guy somehow. Bouncing in, good block there by Swihart to save the run as the Jesus was dancing down the line at third when he saw that ball going to the dirt. Every pitcher on the Red Sox staff gets a little bit more confident when they see Swihart block a ball. Everyone knows that defensively he's still learning. If you're a pitcher, you have to have confidence that you can bounce a slider like that in the dirt with a guy on third base and your catcher's going to knock it down. Cabrera, second on the team in strikeouts. One hit in his last 20 at bats with runners in scoring position. Ground ball down the first baseline, a foul ball. Toyo Tires, the official tire of the Boston Red Sox. Whether you're taking your truck off road or the kids to practice or your sports car to its limits, there's a Toyo Tire for you. Visit ToyoTires.com to find a dealer. Which one are you doing? Uh, off road. Uh, I would have put money on taking your sports car to the limit. <laughs> Infield in all the way around. <laughs> Off road. You said that like you do it every weekend. <laughs> every day. <laughs> <laughs> Popped up. That will work. From second, it's Pedroia who puts it away. And a big out there. The Jesus remains at third with now two down. That was big right there for Masterson. I mean, outside of his very first start in Philadelphia, where he struck out seven, and his strikeout totals have kind of come down with each start. Three a couple times out of just two his last time out. So he's not got a lot of swing and miss stuff. So that's huge to get a pop up with a guy on third base right there. Oh, two down and Brandon Geyer will take a pitch down and in. Geyer with a double his first time up came around to score the first Rays run of the night. 
Chapman coming off the bench but gets to start tonight. Start in right field. Steven Souza Jr. on the bench tonight. Started the first two games for Kevin Cash. Masterson falling behind 3 0. Fourth three ball count of the night for Masterson. Works here with two outs in the fourth inning. I'd say he'd be pretty careful right here and may want to go after Rivera. He agrees and misses down and away for ball four. Third walk given up by Masterson. The first time it's someone other than Kevin Kiermeyer. I want to remind you to tune in tonight after the game to Nesson Sports Today, presented by People's United Bank. Sarah and Adam will have complete coverage of the release of the Ted Wells report. We've got reaction from the Patriots, the NFL, and our own Jermaine Wiggins and Matt Chatham. Plus a look at whether Tom Brady could be suspended for his role in the investigation. See what know how can do. Rene Rivera with runners at first and third, two down. Rivera, a strikeout victim, swinging in the third, the only strikeout of the night for Masterson to this point. Six straight balls now thrown by Masterson all of a sudden. Now three and oh. Wow, hasn't thrown a strike to the back two hitters in the order. This is a guy that you really got to go after. And he walks him. So back to back walks of the eight nine men will bring Juan Nieves out of the dugout and to the mound. So base is now loaded for Tampa Bay with two down in the inning a run already in to tie this game. Have a son or daughter who want to learn more about baseball and their favorite Red Sox players. Now you can check out NessaClubhouse.com. It has videos games and a whole lot more. It's fun free and easy to use. NessaClubhouse.com. Base is loaded two down. Kevin Kiermaier coming up and he is already. Walk twice in this game up against Masterson. By leading off for Kiermaier now, does that kind of change his approach at the play? As you mentioned, he's an aggressive guy. You know, I don't think he changes anything. I think that's just his style, but obviously he's going to try to be as selective as possible and get something to drive. Right now, Masterson cannot find the strike zone. Is that 10 balls in a row? I believe it is. Four straight, four yep. straight, and two here. Yes. My math skills That's pretty are. good. There is a strike and much needed. And see, that's a that shows you uh, some pretty good plate discipline from a young kid, Kmart. He's got a 2-0 count with the bases drunk. He just wants to bail and whale, but he didn't really like that pitch. He had the discipline to stay off of it. Swings of this, fouls it off, and it evens at two and two. So a brief spell of wildness for Masterson. Now an even count of two and two with two outs, and the base is loaded. Foul back, and we'll do it again. Logan Forsyth waiting on deck. Struggled here with command, no question about it, but I think I'd try a slider down and in right here, and if I miss, then go back to the sinker and get a ground ball. If you got to try to get a swing and miss. Fly ball instead to center. Betts is there, and Masterson gets himself out of the bases loaded situation. Rays get a run, tie the score 2-2. Two to two.
Every day at Eastern Bank, our business bankers are here for you days, nights, and doubleheaders. To see why we've been named the number one SBA lender in New England, visit easternbank.com slash smallbiz. On to the bottom of the fourth inning. Mike Napoli leading it off for Boston. Napoli, Sandoval, and Craig to face Colome in the bottom of the fourth inning. Naps tried just about everything to get out of this slump that he's in. He will go up there one at bat, be really aggressive. Sometimes he tries taking some pitches. Just can't seem to quite square one up. Foul off to the right out of play. Happily grounding out to third base in the first inning. Wraps it foul outside a third, and it's two and two. Red Sox group tickets start at just twenty dollars. How easy is it to get twenty of your family and friends together? Visit RedSox.com/groups for more information. For as big a swing as Napoli has, he's generally pretty quick to the ball. And you see on that last pitch how he just rolled over it. He's kind of casting his hands out and around the ball and rolling over things, where he's generally very quick. With his path to the baseball. See out and around again. It's kind of not him. It's kind of his his rear end sort of headed towards the stands, lunging at the ball out and around the pitches. Number one, it's gonna sap you of your power. You're gonna hit a bunch of ground balls to the third baseman, and that's just not the way he generally swings the bat. Swing and a miss elevates the fastball at 94 miles an hour and strikes out Mike Napoli. Second strikeout for Colome. The MO of the Rays pitching staff get ahead in the count, elevate the fastball, climb the ladder on hitters, and get him to swing right through it. One down for Pablo Sandoval. Grounded out to shortstop in the second inning. Alex Colome, incidentally, in case you recognize the name from years past with the Rays, is the nephew, former right handed pitcher Jesus Colome, pitched from the Rays and from 2001 to 2006. Family business. Sandoval fouling it off to the left out of play and is down 0 and 2. He's also the cousin of the Triple A Durham pitcher. Jose Dominguez. They pitched to for the Rays earlier in April. And still in the organization. It's a package deal. The Rays just came down and said, we'll give you all guys a deal. Everybody. <laughs> Jump on a plane, show up. Sort it out when you get there. Now, this kid's got a good arm. Power sinking fastball. He can four seam it like we just saw him do to Napoli. Jim Hickey right there told me he's got a really good slider. His curveball is something that he's really working on, and he doesn't have much of a changeup either. So he's kind of a two pitch guy. Ooh, look out underneath the arms of Sandoval. Somehow get out of the way of that. Take a look at this one again. Didn't hit the blousiness of the uniform. Oh. 
Line to left field and in for a base hit for Sandoval. Boy, he just slashes that ball. Look at that. It's a backdoor breaking ball. It's most hitters will tell you it's not a lot of fun to hit a pitch that's backdooring on you, and he just stays with it. You know he loves to let that ball travel and get deep in the strike zone, and then he just slashes it back out there to left. One out, one on. Alan Craig, who struck out swinging in the second inning. One of two Ks for Colomay in the game tonight. So glance off the catcher. I think Rivera and up to second base now goes Sandoval. Came off him strange. Wasn't sure if he got the umpire too. Yeah, it was hard for him to see because it almost hits Alan Craig and he kind of is blinded there almost. <laughs> he may have been crossed up too. He's kind of reaching for it strangely like he was waiting for it to break. Wild pitch charge to Colome. And Sandoval now in scoring position with one out. Last year, Alan Craig had such a difficult time with balls in on him. We saw him strike out on a breaking ball in his first step bat. He's kind of corrected that issue, and he never really had an issue like that in most of the rest of his career. And he's trying to get things squared away now. Coming in again and missing, kind of surrounding the plate, and now Rivera headed out to talk to Colome. Saturday on Dining Playbook, Billy Costa and Jenny Johnson review Nick Verano's newest venture, the Modern Steakhouse Strip by Strega. Here where you should go before, during, and after the game in Southie. Plus, Billy takes you to Fenway Farms for the new garden location inside Fenway Park. It's all that and more on Dining Playbook Saturday morning at 9. Have you been to Strip by Strega yet? I have not. Have you? Indeed. You have. Oh, yeah. A really nice place. How's that the opening? Uh-huh. Yeah. Invited guests. Yeah. Kind of a big deal. I was just going to say that. <laughs> No, that was excellent. 3 0 pitch is a strike. Alan Craig didn't think so, but apparently picked up the corner. Steve Lyons, I am kind of a big deal. <laughs> you said that, I didn't. <laughs> That's the way I remember it. <laughs> On the ground towards short, Cabrera comes in, plays kind of a hop to change direction on him and throws out Craig, but Sandoval takes third. Seen a couple nice base running decisions by Red Sox base runners today, being able to move up an extra base. And you're right, Cabrera almost played that into a nasty hop for himself. He kind of overcharged it. Two down here in the fourth inning. It brings up Brock Holt. Brock Holt almost never does this, but a little drag bunt down the third base line right here wouldn't be a bad idea. Up the outside corner, evens accounted one and one. Two outs and runners in scoring position, three for five in this category so far in the year. And Sandoval at third, two down. Nice. 
And the strike generally the same spot. I asked Brock Holt if their pitchers kind of had a pattern on what they try to do to him, and he says it changes all the time. But I said, well, where do you feel like you're most susceptible? And he said, generally in, because I, I kind of try to look for the ball out, out over and away. It's a little tougher to get to that pitch if that's what I'm thinking. We've seen him over the last few nights just time after time hit nice hard line drives to left field on balls that are middle away from him. Doing exactly what you're trying to do with that pitch, but hitting it right at an outfielder. Just bad luck. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball away and Holt strikes out. Red Sox leaves Sandoval at third in a 2 2 game from Fenway. Two to two the score. It's to the fifth inning we go. And back to the mound is Justin Masterson. Throwing 74 pitches through the first four. And a first pitch strike to Logan Forsythe, who's been aboard twice, hit by a pitch and single to drive in a run. He's getting single runs in the third and fourth innings. Now a pop up right side. Pedroia backpedaling to the right field lawn. Makes the catch for the first out of the fifth. For every Red Sox hit in May, Echo Store Technologies will donate $50 to the Greg Hill Foundation. Echo Store and the Greg Hill Foundation responding immediately to improve the lives of local families touched by tragedy. To learn more, visit echostore.com. Echo Store Technologies, your data center solutions provider. One out in the fifth inning for James Loney. He's grounded out twice to Pedroia at second base. The first time was into a 4 6 3 double play. And a mild oblique strain at start of the year on the DL. Back when the Red Sox were in St. Pete, Loney was not yet activated. That's the first 15 games of the year. Now one hopper that gets by Pedroia into right field. That was already by him when he was diving there into right. And James Loney with a hit with one down. <laughs> that 
How many times per game does Pedroia dive for a ball? A lot. Ah, all out effort every time. Really ended up nowhere close to that <laughs> as it worked out, but I mean, doesn't stop him from diving. No. Well, you know, I think he has the attitude, and it's it's the great attitude to have is that he believes he can catch every ball. And obviously you can't, but if you go after a ball with the belief that you might not be able to get to it, then you're not going to have the same, you're not going after it the same way. Look at this play in the third inning. All out effort. A really tough diving play there because, as I said before, he's diving up to catch that ball. Almost every other time you're diving, you're really diving down towards the ground. Evan Longoria homering his last time up, just his second home run of the year. Kind of a start and a stop for Loney at first base. Not known for his base stealing abilities, but almost looked like he was starting there at first to take off and then stopped. He's not had an attempt this year. Now stopping would be a good idea for Loney. He's got about size 19 feet. This one yanked to the backstop, and now Loney will get to second base anyway. Wild pitch on court there by Masterson. Just bad release point here. Hangs onto the ball too long, and wow, look at that. Coming inside, and that is ball four. So down to first base goes Longoria with the fifth walk given up by Masterson. H.B. Hood salutes the Red Sox Foundation for their work with the Jimmy Fund. All of us know we must cure cancer, especially the cruelest of them all, children's cancer. We thank the good people at Hood for helping the Red Sox Foundation and the Jimmy Fund teammates for life. Well, we've seen Juan Nieves out there a few times in the game tonight. Back out there to talk to Masterson here with one out and two on. It's time now for the Geico Red Sox moment all season long. Geico will highlight the 1975 Red Sox in honor of their 40th anniversary in their 28th game of the 75 season. Sox lost to the Kansas City Royals 5 to 2. Bill Lee took the loss going seven innings, allowing four runs on eight hits. Hal McRae went three for five with a double and an RBI. It was great to see all those guys here last night. Uh, you, you got that right, man. Some of my some of my idols. Growing up, and even got a chance to play with a few of them. Got a chance to play with Carlton Fisk. Wow, what an impressive player. Jim Rice, Freddie Lynn, I grew up idolizing because he was a center fielder, and so was I. It's just great to get to see all those guys again. Action in the pen now for the Red Sox as Edward Mujica he is warming. One out, Loney at second, Longoria at first. David DeJesus, who's hit the ball hard twice tonight, has two hits and fouls this back, two and one. Did you play with Fisk here or Chicago? In Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. One of the most impressive things I ever saw about Carlton Fisk, and of course, when he went to Chicago, he switched that number around to 72, is that after games, when the rest of us were showering and leaving and he was like 40 at the time you'd see him going up to the weight room and this was in an era when most of us didn't touch a weight and all the guys do now but this was I used to be one of the last guys out of the clubhouse take my time took me a while to just get everything in 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 order and he's still there up there in the clubhouse up in the weight room till one in the morning lifting weights. 90th pitch of the night for Masterson, and it is slap foul off to the left out of play. And the pitching line for Masterson brought to you by Ace Ticket. Four and a third, six hits, two runs, five walks, and only one strikeout tonight for Masterson. De Jesus came into this game hitting just a buck 82 against Masterson, but he's got two hits. 
And a full count now. Most walks that uh, Masterson has allowed in any previous outing this year was three. But he has walked five here tonight. So far, none of those walks have led to runs. If he keeps getting guys into scoring position with fewer than two outs, he's going to it's going to catch up with them sooner or later. Needs a double play ball. Fly ball down the left field line that it's going to make its way foul. Every guy on the infield right now is aware of De Jesus and the fact that he still has good speed, so they know that in order to double him off, they're going to have to turn things very quickly. Not close. Ball four, and the bases are loaded. No one slipping out of the hand on the eight pitch for Masterson, and back to back walks now six tonight allowed by Masterson. How much longer is John Farrell going to watch it? CBS Pharmacy, the proud to support the American Lung Association Lung Force campaign to make lung cancer a public health priority. May 3rd of the 23rd, you can make a donation to support lung cancer research at the registered all CBS pharmacies. CBS Pharmacy, the official pharmacy of the Boston Red Sox. Bases filled with Rays, one out. Joey Butler takes ball one. Tampa Bay left the bases loaded in the fourth inning. You know, they only have six hits, six walks, but it's kind of tough to hit against a guy who doesn't have great command. You can never really get comfortable at the plate. Career high for Masterson is seven walks. This oh. is blooped to right and is going to fall in for a hit. From third base comes Loney. Longoria behind him. Two runs in for Tampa Bay. And the Rays take a 4-2 lead. Now the walks finally catch up to Masterson here. And that will be the night for Masterson. Joey Butler going the other way. Drives in a pair. So the pitching change from Fenway with Tampa Bay now on top four to two. Tenants will receive a free Louis Tion bobblehead presented by Granite City Electric. Visit RedSox.com slash promos for more info and to purchase your tickets now. Now it's 4-2 to two, Tampa Bay on top of Boston now with the Rays with one out having runners at first and third and the Red Sox bring on Edward Mujica into his 11th game of the year. One and one with a 5.11 earned run average. And 12 and a third, seven strikeouts, three walks. Opponents inning at 298. 
against Mujica. Through a season high two and a third scoreless innings on Sunday night against the Yankees. Allowed one hit struck out one and hit a batter getting Jacoby Ellsbury. Who took exception to that at the time. As Drupal Cabrera the batter with runners at first and third. Control problems tonight for Justin Masterson a season high six walks. And four and a third innings. And still responsible for the two men on so far touch for four runs. Certainly if you've been pitching as long as Masterson has. You never want to have a night when you're just. One walk away from your career high in walks. is in a good position here with a couple things going for him. Cabrera strikes out a lot and his numbers are really ugly with guys in scoring position. Swing and a miss and Cabrera strikes out so Mejica gets the first raid that he faces in the game. Two down. That's big right there. A strikeout with a guy on third base. The ball doesn't get put in play. The guy from third can't score. Now you got to get out of the inning. Make insurance great service, great coverage, and a great price for auto, home, or life insurance. Two down in the fifth for Brandon Geyer. A double in the third, a walk in the fourth inning. And a breaking ball that misses apparently inside. To third and Sandoval going up to get it. Comes down and throws out Geyer. Pablo showing some ups at third base. The Rays grab a couple, take a 4 2 lead. Your low fare now at southwest.com. Four to two, Tampa Bay on top of Boston. 
Rays getting two runs in the top half of the fifth, and now Xander Bogarts leads it off here in the bottom of the fifth. Like Swihart and Mookie Betts. Well, Red Sox offense now just has to jump right back on the horse and try to get some more runs here. Half a game to do it. After the Rays took a 1 0 lead in the top of the third, Red Sox got two back in the bottom of the third. And Bogart's right in the middle of that. He got it started with his double to left center field. And action here for Tampa Bay. I mentioned it's just the second start for Colome here with the Rays. Last time went five innings. Here he is in the fifth tonight with double barreled action now in the pen. Bogart's may have won. They check he did not, says Mike DeMero. Colome has done a great job of being economical with his pitches. He's only thrown 65. They don't want him to go more than 80, 85 pitches because he hasn't really built up the arm strength and he can keep rolling the way he's going right now. Popped up, foul off third, Longoria backpedaling. And he will make the catch as Cabrera ends up behind him trying to duck out of the way, ends up on his backside for the first out. One fouled out by Bogarts. Well, coming up, we're going to have the Nesson multi view in the top half of the sixth inning. Now, you may ask, Steve, what is the Nesson multi view? I am going to ask that. What is the Nesson multi view? We're going to have our main shot, which we will provide you, but we'll also have two other boxes that you have seen. And it's going to look like this, which will isolate the pitcher and the hitter only. Now, you've seen some of this a little bit when we've gone to break on occasion. This will be during the inning. So I get to see the pitcher, the hitter, and the game all at the same time. You got it right. My attention span is going to have to be more like a 15 year old then, right? Swing here for Swihart. The indication by Brian Gorman, third base umpire. It's a lot to take in. One down, Blake Swihart here with a count of 0 and 2. Swing and a miss. Swihart striking out. That's the fourth strikeout for Colome, and there are two outs in the fifth. As a director, you get to choose what you want to put up there on the screen, and there's a lot of different screens that you have there in the truck. When we came off that last break, you get a shot of the truck and all the different screens you have. Now, you won't have that many, but you can have your options here. It's almost like directing your own game. It's got to be a little tougher for the director. You know, he's it's a hard enough job trying to decide what everybody at home sees. Now he's got to worry about three different camera angles for people to see. Yeah, that's a lot for Michael Narachi, but he can do it. He can do it. That's a little foul it off at the dish. Now 0 and 2. Colome has been pretty good here tonight. That first outing that he had only threw 60 pitches against Baltimore. Ball and two strikes now to Mookie Betts. That says lined out to left and grounded to short. Mike Garachi is one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. But do you ever think that some directors have like a little bit of a, like kind of a God complex? You'll see what I want you to see and nothing more. I think you don't know Michael all that well, actually, because <laughs> oh, that's not that even kind right. of describes <laughs> Michael to a T. That's not even right, man. <laughs> I've worked with Michael now for 16 seasons. Yeah, you know him better. 2-2. <laughs> two, two. Line to right center field. Kiermaier moves over and makes the catch. The Sox are down in order in the fifth. We played five. It's 4 2 Tampa Bay. There's Michael in the middle. He's going to be busy when we come back. <laughs>
sixth inning. And here is your multi view. Rene Rivera leading it off and a swing and a miss for strike one. Rivera struck out in the third. He walked in the fourth inning. Rivera will be followed by Kiermaier and Forsyth here in the sixth. This is kind of cool. I mean, if you're a guy who really likes to concentrate on pitching, you can see Mujica. If you're a hitter, you can see the hitter, or you can see everything all at once. This is Betts going deep to center field, and he will not make the catch. Rattles off the garage door, and Betts gets it back in quickly, but it is a long leadoff double for Rene Rivera. Well, I think maybe Mookie Betts was fooled by how hard this ball was hit. He got a, a pretty good jump, and he, he takes off after it. This would have been such a pretty catch if he was able to make it. You got to remember, Rivera hasn't hit anything, so he was playing him quite a bit more shallow than he normally would. Pays the price right there with a ball hit up over his head. So a leadoff double by Rivera. Top of the order now, Kevin Kiermeyer, who has walked twice and fly to center. And on the grass at third, Sandoval. And Kiermaier is showing bunt, pulls back and takes ball one. So he's shortened up. You know, Don, it may sound harsh, but a lot of outfielders will tell you, like, on a ball like that that gets hit over Mookie's head on the number nine hitter that's hitting, what, a buck 20? That's the bunt down. Sandoval, who's in close, will go to first, and it's close and not what? in time. Wow. So a bang bang play at first and right now DeMero saying that he is safe at first John Farrell Hearing <laughs> back to the dugout to find out whether or not he's going to challenge this Petey's not even upset. He just turned around looked at Farrell and said challenge it Excellent bunt by Kiermaier gets it down to the right side. I think he's out of there, isn't he? They will challenge it here It is kind of a, a tough call for the umpire to make because Pedroia is not stretching in the normal way that a first baseman would. So it's almost blocked by the play. I think he's, but out, he's out. Yep. And I think that's why he missed it. A lot of umpires will tell you that if they kick a call, it's generally because it's a little bit more unusual than it normally would be. And with the second baseman covering, you see the way Petey's stretching with his left foot on the bag. Rather than his right, it's a it's an odd view. The crowd reacting as they see another shot of it here. You know what it's got to be like to be that umpire now. I think realizes he's wrong. I mean, you know, that's what the system now has is umpires who now realize that they've made the wrong call. He feels shame. <laughs> Goes to the penalty box. Penalty box. He feels shame. Yes. <laughs> Uh, not as quickly as overturned as we perhaps thought on some of the replays that we have seen the replays the fans have seen here in the stadium and now uh, Mike Camaro himself has seen looking over his shoulder up at the big screen in right center after my playing career was over and I started doing broadcasting I got to know quite a few of the umpires a lot better obviously than when I was playing and they're getting the right call right now but they want to get it right you know they, they really, sometimes people think umpires don't care. These guys really care. It's, it's as important for them to do their job well as the players. So five to four on the sacrifice as it works out for Kiermaier that gets Rivera to third base. The infield brought in all the way around now. Logan Forsyth has been hit by a pitch, singled, and popped out. The 0 1 on the ground and oh. backhanded nicely by Mujica. And they've got the runner on a rundown and now out. Throw to first and back to the bag. There goes Forsyth. What a backhanded play by Mujica. It was behind his back, wasn't yes, it? It was. Wow, look what I found, man. It's like a chuck and duck ball, and you throw your hand down there, it goes right in there. Oh, 
Oh! <laughs> Really great reaction here, too. After he catches the ball, he knows exactly who's on base, where they're running, doesn't hesitate at all. Nice. Here comes John Farrell out of the dugout. Red Sox have had Tommy Lane up. Tommy Lane's coming in to deal with James Loney. And they throw out that runner headed to the plate. Two outs here in the sixth inning. 4-2 Tampa Bay. Play ball that ended the first inning, the double play ball that ended the second inning, and then Pedroia just all out effort, tremendous play. Now let's flip it to the other side of the field, climbing the ladder, and then Mujica behind the back. It's a thing of beauty. You know, the great thing about Swihart, too, he's got some good wheels. You throw it to him, he'll just run the guy down. Now, no need for another throw as it turned out. <laughs> yeah. So two outs here in the inning. Edward Mujica is so maybe looking at a split fingernail or a possible blister. Sai so Takahashi, the trainer, working with him there. As Tommy Lane into his seventh game, 4.26 earned run average, five strikeouts, two walks. Opponent sitting at 261 against him. Lefty lefty matchup, and Loney takes strike one. Lane started the eighth inning on Saturday against the Yankees, went two thirds of an inning, faced two batters, Ellsbury and Gardner. Got them both to ground out. Loney has not been hitting for power against left handed pitching. He did go deep against the Orioles earlier this week against the lefty, but he'll be looking to hit the ball the other way, and Lane will be looking to keep it away from him. Two up for Tampa Bay. Xavier Cedeno we've seen in the series and right hander Steve Geltz. Loney to center field bats back a few steps has room and reaches up to make the catch and ends the inning. Five and a half done for two Tampa Bay.
Cruz is the official cruise line of the Boston Red Sox. Join Red Sox legends Louis Tion, Jim Rice, and other guys like Steve Lyons and more on January 9th as they sail the Caribbean on Celebrity's 2016 Red Sox fan cruise. Space is limited. Call 1-888-727-4907 or contact your travel agent today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not giving it to you. <laughs> Don't think I didn't notice you dropping in other guys. Not on letting me. it go. <laughs> <laughs> and other guys. Now the pitching line for Alex Calame, brought to you by your Eastern Lexus dealers. Five innings, three hits, two runs, no walks, four strikeouts, and back out there to begin things here in the sixth inning. He is 74 pitches deep into his outing. Oh, remember what happened in the sixth in last night's ball game. That's going to have to happen again tonight. Pedroia. 0 for 1 with a sack fly in this game. Tonight's key matchup is brought to you by Honda. Start something special. The great deal on a Honda. That's Pedroia hitting 340 with three doubles, two homers. On base percentage of 433 at home this season. Leading it off here in the bottom of the sixth inning. That just missed three and zero. Now everybody in New England knows this, but if you're trying to teach a young kid, boy or girl, how to play this game, just tell them to follow Pedroia around. Watch what he does. He's about their size anyway, so he, all those kids can relate to him. <laughs> I think that's the great thing about baseball. You can be any size to play. And Dustin sort of proves that. MVP. Line to right, and it's in for a base hit. Good start to this bottom of the sixth inning for Boston. It is time now for a game break brought to you by Jordan's, the furniture store of the Boston Red Sox. Tom? Today is the 100th anniversary of Babe Ruth's first Major League home run. The opponent, the New York Yankees. And as part of that uh, tonight, the anniversary of that, the granddaughter of Babe Ruth throwing out the first pitch here at Fenway Park earlier tonight. Been here a few times and we've had the chance to meet her. 
Why not? Nice. 100th anniversary of his first major league home run. And granddaughter here to throw out the first pitch. Now here's the first pitch to David Ortiz. And a swing and a miss. David was going for everything right there. And the amazing thing about Babe Ruth's first home run 100 years ago was he was actually the pitcher that day. He pitched 12 and a third innings, complete game loss in extras. <laughs> really? <laughs> 12 and a 30 pitched. That's it. Well, Alex Colomay tonight goes five plus. That was four hits, and more recently, the base hit to Dustin Pedroia. He didn't walk anybody, struck out four. And responsible for Pedroia at first base as Xavier Cedeno takes over. Ooh, wow. That one fooled everybody, including the umpire. Yeah, David got jelly legged a little bit, and the umpire as well. Watch him hesitate back there. Ooh. Ooh. That's a really good pitch. <laughs> Did he go? They'll check. No, says Brian Gorman. Uh, just a note on Masterson's start. He doesn't go five innings. That's the seventh time now that the Red Sox starters have not gone five innings. That's tied for second in all of baseball. But the good news, the Rays are the worst at that. They've done it ten, or I mean, the Blue Jays are the worst. They've done it ten times, and the Red Sox start a series up there in Toronto on Friday night. Soft grounder headed towards second base. Forsyth will throw out Ortiz. And moving along is Pedroia to second base. Well, don't miss Red Sox game day live presented by DCU Digital Federal Credit Union Friday at 6:30. TC and Wake will preview Wade Miley's start. DCU Digital Federal Credit Union. What can DCU save you? Well, just a one batter for Cedeno. Gelt's coming in. Tampa Bay on top four to two. Biopharmaceutical plants throughout the Northeast. Did you know that about FWM? Learn more about this proud Boston Red Sox sponsored FWM.com. 4 2 Rays on top of the Red Sox. One out here in the bottom of the sixth inning. Third pitcher of the inning for Tampa Bay. Stephen Geltz, 13th appearance, 1 and 1 with a 3.95 ERA. 18 strikeouts in 13 and 2 thirds. And when it's hitting at just 167 against Geltz. This worked on Sunday against Baltimore, took the loss. Like Napoli, the batter with Pedroia at second base, one out. No surprise that they make this move, get the lefty out of there, and 
We know that Napoli's had a rough season, but he hits fairly well against left-handers, hitting a buck, a buck 36 against righties. Bouncing in, but blocked by Rivera. Runner at second in Pedroia. The responsibility of the starter, Alex Colomay, who started this inning and was lifted after the base hit by Pedroia. Still looking on. He ends up going five plus, four hits, no walks, four Ks. You got a win going five innings last time out against Baltimore. Trying to get a win going five innings tonight against Boston. But again, putting the game in the bullpen's hands. Napoli on the ground is short. Cabrera's you know, he looked at third, now goes to first. And Napoli is retired. He took a look. Pedroia took off and gets to third with now two down. Now, Don, the game has changed so much that it used to be about starting pitching. And if you were the opposing team, you'd say, man, let's get that starter out of there somehow and get into their bullpen where those guys don't know what they're doing. Now teams, many, many teams are so heavily loaded in their bullpen, especially the Rays, they don't mind getting to their bullpen at all. It's where there's some of their best arms are in their bullpen. Now Pedroia 90 feet away and Rivera headed out to talk to Steve Geltz. Think about how crucial middle relief has become now in the game the way it is and you look at guys who are good middle relievers. I guess it used to be, you know, you got good guys at the beginning of the game and the starters. You got the good guy at the end who's a closer, and then people in between. Well, now you got a really good eighth inning guy. A lot of teams have a really good seventh inning guy. I mean, you're getting shorter and shorter here as to what the starter is expected to do and does now. Yeah. And every team likes to shorten games down. Like, like you said, if you have lights out seven, eight, and nine guys, you're trying to make it a six inning game. Get a lead after six. I get to my seven, eight, and nine guys. Lights out. Game over. We just saw the Yankees over the weekend, and they appear to have that set up. As this is lined to center, Kiermaier is there. A hot shot off the bat of Sandoval, but right at Kiermaier to end the inning. Through six, it is four to two, Tampa Bay. Top of the seventh inning, 4-2 Tampa Bay on top. Tommy Lane back out there for Boston. He got the final out of the sixth inning and deals with Evan Longoria to begin the seventh. Right. 
Longoria with a home run back in the fourth inning, a solo shot off Justin Masterson, his second home run of the year, and at the time tied the score two to two. As we get two more in the fifth, ranks this foul one and two. Outside and it is two and two. David Jesus has been called back to the dugout. And it looks like Sousa Jr. has come out and it is. Started the first two games in right field and went about here. They left the lefty out there in the lane rather than to Jesus. Janichi Dezao up in the pen for Boston. We've seen Mujica and Lane so far in relief of Justin Masterson, who for John Farrell lasted just four and a third innings. That stays outside and a leadoff walk for Evan Longoria. Well, don't miss Red Sox first pitch presented by Joseph Abood, available at Men's Warehouse Friday at 6 p.m. TC and Wake will preview the Sox J series. On the phone is Juan Nieves. Interesting move here getting Susan into the game. His numbers against left handed pitching aren't all that great. He does have home run power. He's hit a couple balls out of the ballpark, but you get a right handed bat in there instead of a lefty. So De Jesus out of the game on base three times, single, double, and a walk. And here is Steven Souza Jr. 232 average, four homers, 11 runs batted in. Four hits in his last seven at bats. Toss over to first, and back is Longoria. So he's a junior, 0 for 8 as a pinch hitter in his career with a walk. Another check here on Longoria's lead's not terribly large, but Tommy Lane very concerned about him. Can't remember the last time Longoria tried to steal a base. A third time. Am I missing something? If you are, I'm missing the same thing. Yeah, perhaps a stall tactic because here comes John Farrell. Ah, there you go. Waiting for Tazawa to be ready. He is ready. So those calls to throw over to first base came from the dugout. And we will have the pitching change. Tommy Lane uh, still standing there. And now the call is made from John Farrell to get to Zawa. So the pitching change from Fenway Park with 4 2 Tampa Bay lead.
If the Sox win the championship this season, it's all free. It's the monster repeat, and it's going on now. A leadoff walk allowed by Tommy Lane to begin things here in the seventh inning. He leaves, and into the game comes Chinichi Tozawa, fourth Boston pitcher used in the night. 14th appearance, 0 1 with a 2.19 ERA. 12 into third, 11 strikeouts. Opponents hitting at 234 against Tozawa. You, know, you were talking about how the the complexion of bullpens have changed, and one of the things that goes hand in hand with that is a guy like Tazawa who comes in, almost always comes in with guys on base, almost always asked to stop either a mini rally or a big one. And those guys, the seventh and eighth inning guys, usually get no credit at all, and it's always the closer that comes in generally with nobody on, nobody out. To preserve a two or three run lead and he gets the save and shakes hands and makes lots of money. These guys are the guys that really come in in pressure packed situations. Well, fastball right out of the gate and right down the middle and Sousa fouls it back. And we saw Tazawa come into the game in the seventh inning Monday night against Tampa Bay with one on and one out. Allowed his inherited runner to score and was charged to Buckholtz on David DeJesus RBI single. Strike over the outside corner, rolling two. <laughs> yeah. The strange thing about that outing the other night, the two walks allowed by Tozawa. Don't see that ever. Everything up. He's usually one of those guys where if you don't hit that first fastball, you're looking at a lot of trouble for the rest of your at bat. Speaking of up. Well, at least that one was intentional. The tough thing for a hitter against a guy like Tazawa and Koji is you, you're thinking you're going to get the split right now, but you can't totally commit to that because he throws too hard. There it is. It's really hard as a hitter to sit on an off speed pitch or a split finger fastball when the guy's throwing 94 95. If you guess wrong, you might catch one in your ear flap. The Whoa. breaking ball he mixes in there, curveball. It's a pretty good looking pitch. Souza's doing a good job of laying off of that. Runner goes, uh, swinging a foul by Souza on a fastball right down the middle again as Gloria taken off there, headed back to first. What would you do, Don, if you're hitting right now? You saw a 3 2 fastball right there. Yep. Are, are you confident again that you're going to see 3 2 fastball? You go no. all in and you're just going to yank one, or do no. you think that he might throw you something off speed in I, this situation? I feel splitter coming on. 3 2. 3 2. Getting beat in the game with a guy on base. Yep. It is a curveball instead, and it misses for ball four. So another walk by Tozawa, but no fastball. Man. No fastball is right. Get immediate care without leaving the ballpark at the Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center first aid station behind section 12 on the lower concourse. BIDMC is the official hospital of the Boston Red Sox. So two on nobody out and Joey Butler the batter and he takes a look at a ball down low. Tazawa has allowed runs in three of his last five appearances after beginning the year with eight scoreless appearances in eight innings. 
This is line to left and diving forward to make the catch is Craig and fires it back towards the infield. Nice play on a sinking liner by Alan Craig. We saw Alan Craig in right field in a crucial situation dive for a ball that got by him that really hurt. Comes up big right there with a the play. <laughs> It's a tough decision, man. You're seeing that ball. You're seeing it sink. You're thinking, can I catch it? What if I don't catch it? Should I even try to catch it? If it gets by me, it's up against the wall. Everybody's running for days. Yeah, a little bit of indecision there. You're in some big trouble. Nice play, though. So two on, one out. And as Dribble Cabrera, 0 for 3. Now you need a ground ball. Runner at second base, the responsibility of Tommy Lane. Zhao responsible for Souza at first. Rays have left eight men on base through the first six innings. Strike two. We've seen Tozawa kind of vary his pitches a lot more to go along with the wildness over the last few nights. Throwing a lot more balls, walking guys, throwing breaking balls. Dribble Cabrera, two for his last 25 at the plate. His team that came in struggling offensively, and they hit as a club at 233. Only the Angels and Rangers have a lower batting average as a team, and this is in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. The Rays 14th in runs scored. Where the White Sox have scored less runs. And right now, three games back of the Yankees in the American League East. Two balls, two strikes, says Jubal Cabrera, batting with two on here for Tampa Bay. Bouncing in, Swihart blocked wow. it very nicely. <laughs> you don't often see a base runners not move up because the pitcher gets the ball and holds them on a ball in the dirt. That that hit every part of Swihart and bounced back out to Tazawa. Got the job done. Yeah, pitch coming to Cabrera. Oh, Ooh, late shit. swing and hits it is on deck man and Brandon Geyer. Oh, Geyer get down hand. Yeah, and the forearm. forearm, I think. I mean, it's so hard to get hit where he's standing with a left handed hitter. I mean, Cabrera had to almost take that ball right out of Swihart's glove. Watch how late he swings at this thing. <laughs> oh, jeez. That is a ridiculously tough angle. The pitch again to Asdrubal Cabrera. Popped up right side. Infield fly rule in effect as Pedroia puts it away. Two down in the inning. 
Uh, don't miss WB Mason extra innings live right after the game. TC and Wake will have clubhouse reaction from Justin Masterson and John Farrell. Whatever, whenever, wherever. Who but WB Mason? Trying to work around two walks to begin this inning. The Red Sox pitching one by Lane, one by Tazawa. Since then, Butler is lined out and a very nice catch by Alan Craig. Now pop out by his Drupal Cabrera, and here is Brandon Geyer. Fouls it back and out of play. 95 on our fastball from Tazawa. Geyer hit on the forearm while waiting on deck. Moments ago, and now batting. <laughs> the reason guys stand where he was standing on deck is because you feel pretty safe there. It's okay. <laughs> Fouls it off to the right this time, the breaking ball, and it's 0 and 2. A few more curveballs tonight for Tazawa. Yep. And hey, Rivera, who doubled his last time up, waiting on deck. He can get himself out of this thing here. On the ground, a shortstop. Bogarts will go to second for the fourth shot, and Tazawa does get out of it. So nicely done. Red Sox trail by two. Coming up, Alan Craig, Brock Holt, and Xander Bogarts. to hear what your favorite dish at your favorite restaurant is. All you have to do is send a quick video or photo of your To Die For dish and share a dining playbook on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. Just hashtag Top Nosh. Well, Tazawa gets out of the jam as the reason another opportunity, but they strand two more on base. They now have left 10 men through the first seven innings. Open has been busy tonight. Alan Craig leading it off as Steve Geltz back out on the mound. Geltz retired the last two in the sixth inning. Starts the seventh. Red Sox have more action in the pen. Robbie Ross Jr. warming. Call to strike. A high strike at that. Colomay started, went five plus, giving up two runs. Pitcher of record right now for the Rays. 
Xavier Cedeno, third of an inning, and now Steve Geltz. Foul tip one and two. I could be happy with back to back to back doubles. You think? Yeah. Be nice. And back to back doubles in the third. And the Red Sox scored their first run. Ooh. Alan Craig right there on that pitch was just begging that that thing got called a ball. Kind of feels like he's got new life, I hope. A little low. He's kind of all around the strike zone, but just missing. Full count. Fouled off at the plate, glancing off of Rene Rivera. I like Rivera's chest protector. Not sure exactly what it is. This guy's even style when they're sitting back there behind the dish now. You call that kind of a camo? Yeah. A little blue uh, yeah. and blue camo pattern. Yep. So nobody can see him back there? <laughs> It's one foul back. He's got the hockey mask going. He's got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah. It's amazing to me too now the catchers have the padding behind the legs. You kind of sit on it like a seat. Yeah, they you do. Know? It's comfortable. Kind of saves I mean, your legs a little bit. Yeah, as comfortable as it can get. As it can be, yeah. But that's a padded area back there now. That is ball four, and down to first base goes Alan Craig. Nice at bat for Craig, a leadoff walk. Stay tuned tonight following WB Mason, Extra Innings Live, a Red Sox final presented by Uno's. TC and Week will have highlights from around the majors. So Alan Craig at first base and Brock Holt coming up. He is grounded back to the mound and struck out swinging. Brock needs to get it going again suddenly in a little bit of a slump himself. Line Look foul out. into the dugout and some tumbling off. The bench area there. <laughs> Brandon Workman. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh I hope he's okay but he went. Right over the top. Landed on his noggin back there. Back to the mound and Geltz will go to second base for one on the first and Holt beats it out. So they get the lead runner and Alan Craig for the first out of the inning. Now they were dangerously close to messing that up. Watch this kind of errant throw to second base. This thing tails on him. Boy, that could have. Been in the center field. That would have been a lot more fun. Craig does a good job of trying to get in deep on Cabrera. So a hole reaching on the fielder's choice. One out in the inning. Here's Xander Bogarts. Double in the third. Fouled out to Evan Longoria in the fifth inning. More action for the Rays. Kevin Jepson, the former Angel, up in the pen. On the ground foul. No one two now to Bogarts. <laughs> the 
Toronto has up their lead tonight now on top of New York five to one in the ninth inning in Toronto. How about everybody jumping on CC Sabathia except the Red Sox. They came into that outing against the Red Sox 0 and 4 to begin the year. Brock Holt one for one and stolen bases on the years. They check on him at first base. No two pitch to Bogarts. Else throwing about 93, but it looks harder because he's got a real kind of a herky jerky delivery, really fast. Bogarts to right. Brandon Geyer is out there and he puts it away. Middle of the cap high for the second out of the seventh inning. Send it down to Gary. Steve, uh, earlier you mentioned the no batting gloves approach Blake Swihart goes with, and it's not because he doesn't like to give them a chance. We'll get to that story in just a second, but Little League High School, he never went with the batting gloves. He was a wrestler, so he told me maybe that's what's leading to his hands-on approach quite literally, except when it's raining last year, a game in Pawtucket, it was raining. He went with the batting gloves, but he went to readjust them, completely ripped the Velcro strap off, took that as a sign, said he threw away the gloves, he'll never go back to them, uh, and quite frankly, guys, in this day and age when players are like rocking more accessories than a Claire store, kind of refreshing. And this gets away on the snap throw to first base and taking second base is Holt. Well, Rivera tried to use Swihart kind of as a shield there. Yeah, like you can't see me trying to throw the guy out. Didn't work out well for him. Loney's had kind of a rough time down there at first base catching the ball today. Well, I like that story by Gary right there. It's nice you learn something, but why somebody does what mm -hmm. they do. Swihart, like the Hulk, ripped his own glove right off. And that was the end of batting gloves. That's done. Don't need them. Bouncing in again, blocked by Rivera. No advance at second base for Brock Holt. See what this pitch is. Uh, it looked like kind of a split down into dirt. You expect it. Good job of knocking it down. In my opinion, the toughest pitch to block as a catcher is a fastball. It might sound kind of crazy, but you don't expect a fastball to be in the dirt, and it gets on you so much quicker, it's hard to block. When you put three fingers down and you get a slider, your, your first thought is, oh, he might throw this in the dirt. So you're ready. You put the old number one down, you're kind of expecting the guy to throw the ball where you want it. it goes in the dirt, it's a surprise. Swing and a foul tip into the catcher's mitt held on to by Rivera for strike three. We're through seven, four to two, Tampa Bay.
Troy early on with his diving grab. Really get up and throw out James Loney at first base. Another outstanding play from Dustin Pedroia turned in tonight defensively. Four time Gold Glove Award winner. Raised with a 4 2 advantage to the eighth inning we go. And Rene Rivera will lead it off here against the new Red Sox pitcher. He has been busy for the Red Sox this season into his 12th game of the year. 4.22 earned run average. Six strikeouts, four walks. And opponent sitting at 300 against Robbie Ross Jr. Last worked on Sunday night against the Yankees. Get uh, Stephen Drew to fly out. Last six games and 1.80 earned run average. Jammed and a foul off to the right. Hey, look at the way this series has unfolded, and the Red Sox come down to the final game trying to win a series, but they're two for 24 in this series with runners in scoring position. One for eight tonight. Hard to win. Broken bat, fly ball to shallow left. Back goes Bogarts, and he will backpedal his way out almost to medium depth left to make the catch for the first out of the eighth. That's splintering there for Rivera. He is out number one. And Kevin Kiermeyer, top of the order. Remember, over the last couple seasons, it seemed like broken bats were just so commonplace and shattering all over the place. In this series, we've seen a lot more of them, but it seems like most of them have come from the Rays side. A lot of guys going away from the maple bats, and those maple bats would just explode. We saw one last night that went into about 50 pieces. I have never seen one explode the way last night's did. It was unbelievable. About spring training this year when Napoli broke a bat in half yeah. and hit the ball out of the yard. <laughs> Swing and a miss, and Robbie Ross Jr. makes quick work of Kiermeyer. Two down here in the inning. Great job of pitching right there, knowing exactly wanted to, what he wanted to do and just climb the ladder there late with that high fastball. I think people might ask, well, why does that work all the time if you kind of know it's going to happen? As a hitter, you see that pitch really well. It's very enticing to swing at, but as Kiermaier showed you right there, you can't get on top of it. Looks good until you hack at it. Logan Forsyth singled back in the third inning to drive in a run. This will bounce in and glance off a of Swihart to even the count of one and one. Bob's Discount Furniture is going to bat for the Jimmy Fund once again. Bob will donate $1,000 to the Jimmy Fund for every game saved this season. Everybody saves at Bob's. Bob's Discount Furniture, quality, choice, and value. Learn more at mybobs.com. Red Sox trailing by two runs as the Rays bat here in the top of the eighth. High fly ball to center field. Playable for Mookie Betts. Robbie Ross Jr. has a 1 2 3 8. It's 4 2 Tampa Bay.
Southwest.com. Mitsubishi Motors, find your own lane. Sullivan Tire and Auto Service, thank you, New England, for 60 great years. And by the Scion TC. Back at Fenway Park with the game summaries brought to you by Xfinity. Tampa Bay with a 4-2 lead. Colome, the pitcher of record right now for Tampa. Five innings giving up two earned runs. Evan Longoria with a home run tonight. Masterson walks six and four and a third gives up four runs and currently on the hook as the Red Sox come to bat here in the last of the eighth inning. And face the new pitcher Kevin Jebson. Mookie oh. Betts takes a 95 mile an hour fastball up and in. Another hard thrower out of the bullpen here for the Rays. Jepson's 12th appearance, a nifty 1.74 earned run average. Nine strikeouts to one walk, and opponent's hitting at 158 against Jepson. And a blown save on Sunday at Baltimore. These three batters, double, single, single before he was chased from the game. That's to deep left field. High, deep, and very good. Two of them last night, one tonight, his fifth of the year, and the Red Sox are back within a run. Don, he is hitting absolute laser beams out of this place. On a 2-0 pitch, you kind of got to throw him a fastball, and it's the speed. You don't want to get him on base to lead off an inning, so you pump a fastball in there, and he cleans it out. Watch how quickly this dart gets out of here. Four of the five home runs he has have been right here at Fenway Park. And this ball's out of any yard. Oh, he hit that girl right in the back. She was trying to get out of the way. She didn't have time to get out of the way. Now Pedroia ahead 1-0. On the ground, left side, as Dribble Cabrera gliding to his left. Throw a little bit off the mark, but Loney able to keep the foot on the bag for the first out here of the eighth. Look at the young woman out there, <laughs> like trying to get out of the way, and it hit her right in the small of the back, and she's still feeling it. That's going to leave a mark. Did someone give her the ball back at least? I don't know where the ball ended up. And so bounce into Ortiz for ball one. David 0 for three tonight, reaching on an error in the first. Since then, he's grounded out to short, grounded out to second. Took this Red Sox. Offense until the sixth inning and last night's ball game to get going and it was Mookie Betts that did it They have just five hits again this evening Strike call. David didn't think so, and it's two and one. Here to be a tad outside. Mark Carlson with the plate tonight for the umpires. David three for ten in his career against Jepson. And Ortiz late on the fastball. Red Sox with double barreled action. Agando and Uihara. for ball three.
Well, I bet Big Pop is looking dead red. Ball four, and Ortiz will take the walk. Jepson staying away. And the Red Sox have a one out base runner here for Mike Napoli. Napoli tonight, 0 for 3. He's grounded out to third base, struck out swinging, and grounded out to short. Chops at it, fouling it at the plate. First pitch at 95 miles an hour. 0 for 6 against Jepson in his career with four strikeouts for Napoli. Jepson appeared in 74 games last year. Now he gets a lot of work. Strike two. Same spot. This time Napoli takes it. Nasty pitch. Not a pitch as a hitter that you can really handle, but still a strike. Sandoval on deck, one out in the inning. The oh, breaking ball man. that Napoli is fortunate still to be standing at the plate. I think he caught a break right there. That's a filthy pitch right there, and that's probably should be strike three. So you're feeling good about yourself still standing at the plate. Take advantage of this. Another breaking Whoa. ball, and again called a ball. So not getting the low strike call, and Jepson can't believe it. Back to back curveballs for the right hander. Look at look at the Amica sign right there. Every pitch just at the bottom of the zone. That's not a lot of fun to try to hit. It's been lucky that those got called balls. On the ground foul outside a third. You're talking about Napoli earlier kind of surrounding the ball and just did there again on a pitch headed away. Yep. His path to the baseball just isn't very direct right now. Just casting it out. He's got to start thinking right center field gap. And that doesn't mean he's going to hit it over there. But if you think that way, he'll keep the ball fair into the other gap if he pulls it. See a lot of the balls that he's coming out and around. They're going foul or he's fouling out or he's hitting the ball down the left field line. Think about drilling one right over Forsythe's head at second base. Napoli lines it to left, and it's going to bounce into the glove of Butler. Throw to second is late. He trapped it out there in left field. Napoli's aboard on a base hit. Oh, that was really lucky, too. I know that Big Poppy isn't running all that well out there, but if that ball scoots by, you're looking at least second and third. Now you're going to have a runner out there. Louis Jimenez is going to pinch run in his Red Sox debut. Lamed off waivers by the Red Sox from the Milwaukee Brewers on Sunday. He appeared in 15 games with the Brewers. Struggling there, one for 15 to begin the year, so claimed off waivers. Represents the tying run at second base. Pablo Sandoval. One for three in the game. 
That was a really tough decision for John Farrell to make in that situation. You know Big Poppy doesn't have great speed to be able to score on a base hit. You need that run to score to tie it. But if you do tie it up and you go extras, you've lost your biggest power threat in your lineup. Two and oh. You know, I'm sure that's not a decision that John Farrell makes on his own either. He talks to Tori Lovello. He's talking to Butterfield. He's talks to all his coaches and say, hey, what do you think about this situation here? What should we do? They come up with a final decision to make sure that if there's a base hit, you score that run. Got to tie it before you can win it. Sandoval waiting on a 2-0 pitch, and he gets a fastball away and fouls it off. And a fastball, but not necessarily where he wanted it. He does have a home run off Jepson in his career. You know, Don, I think you read that exactly right. You're usually a 2-0, you think the guy's going to get out and pull the ball. He waited on it. He was trying to hit that thing to left field. Ball three. And for Jepson, he's thrown 22 pitches, but only nine for strikes since coming in. Do you want to throw this one for a strike? No. Ball four, and the bases are loaded. So Sandoval receives the second walk allowed by Jepson. Jim Hickey on the phone. As the Red Sox have loaded the bases. And Daniel Nava has stepped out onto the on deck circle. Jim Hickey goes from the phone to the mound here to check on Jepson. They have just gotten their right hander up, Brad Boxberger. This is just the second pitch he has thrown out there in the pen. Boxberger has been nasty on the Red Sox. So Daniel Nava will be the batter. Now Craig tonight had been 0 for 2 with a walk, but uh, Nava pinch hitting. With the tying run 90 feet away, the go ahead run in scoring position. Nava hasn't played in a couple nights. He's waited eight innings to play in this one, one for his last 17. It's a difficult spot to come in and try to be the hero. Now, a two for four in his career against Jepson. Bases filled with Red Sox, one out in the inning. Nava about his recent struggles and he's I asked him if he's been tinkering with anything he said he really hasn't he said last year he did and he was lost and he just couldn't figure out anything he said this year I feel like my swing is right I've hit some balls hard I haven't had any really good luck so I'm not messing with too much I just have to stick with it curveball in there for a strike that time Evans accounted one and one Nava with two grand slams to his credit 382 hitter with the bases loaded. Menez pinch running at third. Napoli at second. Sandoval at first. Red Sox trailing by a run. Nava hits it on the ground to first base. Loney's coming home with it for an out there. And that is the only out they'll get. But the four shot at the plate is the second out of the eighth inning. It's a good play by James Loney to take that lead run to make sure the game doesn't get tied up. Don't even want to mess around with taking a step to your left to try to get the out at first. Doesn't make any sense. You have to cut that run down. 
Bases reloaded here with now two outs in the inning and Brock Holt an old for three night. Takes ball one. Two for two in his career against Jepson, both singles. That's a strike, Ooh. and I'm not sure it was. Brock Holt has such a good eye up there. It's too bad when a close pitch like that gets called a strike when you pretty much just spit on it, knowing that it wasn't a good pitch to hit. Holt hits it on the ground at first base. Loney will take it himself to the bag for the out that ends the inning. So the Red Sox leave them loaded. They get a run on the home run by Mookie Betts for three Tampa Bay. To the ninth inning, Daniel Nava staying in the game and taking over in left field after he pinch hit for Alan Craig. In the bottom of the eighth, Alexia Gondo becomes the sixth Red Sox pitcher of the night and appears in his 12th game of the year. Want to know the 3.09 earned run average, 11 and two thirds, 10 strikeouts, and opponents hitting at 167 against a Gondo. James Loney made the final play to end the eighth inning. Leads it off here in the ninth. Loney had a single back in the fifth inning at one for four night. One of the eight hits the Rays have put together. Gondo working in back to back games at a 1 2 3 8th inning in last night's game. Given up four runs total on the year, two home runs. Slap foul off to the left out of play. Robbie Ross pitched the eighth inning at a 1 2 3 eighth with a strikeout. As Evan Longoria limbers up on deck, then we'll see Steven Souza Jr. scheduled to bat here as part of the top of the ninth inning. 
On the ground and to the backhand goes Bogarts. Plants and throws, and he is going to get Loney at first base. Nice stretch, too, on the other side by Napoli. Loney does not run terribly well, but a nice play by Bogarts. Bogarts intentionally, intentionally bounced this ball over. Watch him come up. Look at his sights. He's just saying, let me bounce it to Napoli. I don't have to throw it all the way there. Perfect one-hop play. One out here in the ninth, and it brings up Evan Longoria. In the air to deep left field for Evan Longoria, and a blast right out of Fenway Park. His second home run of the night, and it gives the Rays a two-run pad again. They now lead 5-3. to three. So the home run ball has been a problem for Agondo. A little bit worried about as many appearances as he's made, whether the velocity would be there. Tonight's T-Mobile game changer performance, second home run of the night for Evan Longoria. Must be nice to hit him so far that you don't even have to watch. He had one home run all season coming into tonight's action. And in game 28 of the year, he's got two tonight. Last time he had a two home run game, September of 2013, had none last year. That'll get away, and it's now 3 and 0. Oh. Red Sox getting a run closer on the home run by Mookie Betts, but a quick answer from Evan Longoria here in the top of the ninth. And there is a four pitch walk now to Steven Souza Jr. Second time he has walked since coming into the game. And that now is nine walks given up by Red Sox pitching in this game tonight. That's a lot of walks. You're absolutely lucky that there's only been five runs scored with all those walks. Six of the walks charged to the starter, Justin Masterson, and four and a third. Lane allowed a walk to Zawa, a walk, and now Agondo, a walk. Joey Butler, his fifth plate appearance of the game, one for four, had a two run single to right field in the fifth inning with the bases loaded. His last batter that Masterson faced. Red Sox in the bottom of the ninth will send up their 8 9 1 hitters. On the ground towards shortstop Bogarts will go to second base for one on to first not in time. Do get the lead runner in Souza for the second out six to four on the force out. Xander Bogarts doing a really good job of fighting to get over and in front of that ball so that he could make the play. Two down, Butler at first, and as Drupal Cabrera, 0 for 4. On the ground, right side, Pedroia gathers and throws and ends the ninth. Red Sox now trail by two thanks to the home run by Longoria.
Lead over the Red Sox. They got an insurance run on the home run by Longoria. And into the game, Brad Boxberger, his 12th appearance of the year, 2 on 1 with a 1.74 earned run average, 6 4 6 in save opportunities. 16 Ks to 5 walks, and opponents hitting at 143 against Boxberger. Struck out the side Friday against Baltimore to pick up his sixth save. The six saves ranks tied for sixth in the American League in saves. Xander Bogarts leading it off and taking strike one. This guy's pretty nasty, so you got to hope to get somebody on, and then somebody hit a mistake a long way. On the ground up the middle, they're kind of shifting, and it is Forsyth who is not going to be able to make a play. Somebody is on. Xander Bogarts to begin things here in the ninth on a base hit. When you're facing a really tough pitcher, you got to try to not do too much, take it right back up the middle, and that's all he's doing. Lead runner on for the Red Sox. They bring the tying run to the plate here in Blake Swihart. Double his first double in the major leagues back in the third inning. And his first RBI. Fouled off to the left, jumping on that first pitch from Boxberger. <laughs> Nice catch in the stands. Not sure if this guy had a glove or used his hat. What's he got? Hat. His hat. There it is. <laughs> he made the play. Bouncing in and getting away. Rounding second is Bogarts. He will stay there. No reason to go any farther. Wild pitch charge to Boxberger. Well, you put Swihart in a precarious situation here with a lot of pressure on a young kid, but that's what you've got. I mean, Hanley is not on the DL, but he's hurt. We won't see him coming to the plate. Almost everybody else has been used. Jimenez has been in the game. Nava hit last inning. You've got Sandy Leon, the only guy on the bench. Swihart pops it up. Foul ground. Rivera coming back. He's got a play and he makes it for the first out here of the ninth. So one down and here comes Mookie Betts who an inning ago got the Red Sox at the time within a run with his third home run in the last two games. And another monster shot. Mookie's last six hits have been for extra bases. And if you'll remember back to spring training, he led the entire Grapefruit League in extra base hits. John Farrell talking about him today before the game about his bat speed, and that's where his power comes from. Great bat speed. As you look at him size wise he is not that big not big at all but he is put together pretty nicely but it's all we heard about was Mookie Betts last year he's in a ball he's in double A's keep moving up the ladder and the only I never saw him play so I was thinking I want to see if this kid's going to get the bat knocked out of his hands when he gets to the big leagues he answered that question quickly and this he's out ahead of ranks it foul the change up that he was out ahead of I think the last thing that Mookie's thinking about right here is going deep. It's kind of not how he thinks. Trying to put good swings on the ball. I'm sure, he'd settle for a nice single. Boxberger and Rivera going back and forth, so now they're going to talk it over.
We got the win in back to back appearances against the Red Sox when the Red Sox were in Tampa Bay, April 22nd and 23rd. In here trying to gather the save tonight. Looking for his seventh save of the year. That's for the swing and a foul tip at a 95 mile an hour fastball. Watch him from the side. Look how he loads up. You talk about where his power comes from. You see the hips coming through. And the fastball, but up and away. That's laces it foul. He's all over the off speed stuff of Boxberger. Pulling a foul, but not swinging through it. Boxberger's trying to get a strike out here. Pitch was just 81 miles an hour there, and Mookie not getting fooled. You could see him make the adjustment in the middle of his swing and slow things down. The payoff pitch again. And Betts will take the walk. Very close pitch. Oh, man. That's a tough pitch to take with two strikes. That's a, a kid who's mature beyond his years, especially with plate discipline and pitch recognition. 22 years old, 3 2, pressure situation. I don't like that pitch. <laughs> Two on one out and Dustin Pedroia now has a chance. Outside for ball one. This is the situation where it could be nice. Maybe Pedroia will send everybody home happy, but you do not have Ortiz hitting behind him anymore. Jimenez. The strike evens a count. The chance you took by pinch running for David Ortiz in the bottom of the eighth on the tying run was in scoring position. Luis Jimenez now in the on deck circle. Pedroia grounds it foul and trails in the count now one and two. Dustin with a single back in the sixth inning. Also an RBI in this game and a sack fly back in the third. His 12th RBI of the year. Very high. Two and two. Hey, look at Boxberger's fastball today. Staying right around 92. We've seen him with more velocity than that in the past. Swing and a miss and Pedroia strikes out on a 93 mile an hour fastball. Two down. Again with the Rays pitchers late in counts elevating fastballs to get strikeouts. And Petey is going to swing at that all night long. He loves the ball up there. Sometimes he gets it. Sometimes he doesn't. And frustrated Dustin Pedroia is out number two of this ninth inning. So here is Jimenez. 
67 career major league games, a 218 hitter. And as you mentioned earlier, and appeared in 15 games with the Brewers this year, it was one for 15 in those games. A nice chance to introduce himself to Red Sox fans, that's for sure. Face Boxberger once in his career, 0 for 1. Instead of that man, it is Luis Jimenez who is batting here with two down in the ninth. And the tying run at first base. Ball and a strike. Little number in front of the plate. Rivera takes charge and throws out Jimenez. Ball game over. The Tampa Bay Rays hold on and beat the Red Sox five to three in this game from Fenway, and they take the series. As the Red Sox tonight end up with a loss, as does Justin Masterson, who ended up walking six. The Red Sox pitching staff walking nine in this game tonight. It is the Rays who take two out of three from Fenway Park. Final score again, Tampa Bay 5, Boston 3 as we send it to Tom Karen.